Hello friends, welcome you all to my YouTube channel that is Discourse Online Politics. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the previous year question paper of UPAPO from the year of 2002. So you all know that in the UPAPO examination, prelims examinations, a total number of questions which is going to become that is 150 questions. 50 questions would be from the GK and 100 questions would be from the law subject. Here in this video, we will go to the questions of the law and we will try to answer those questions here. Now the first question which is coming, which has been asked in the UPAPO 2002 question paper that was asked, uh, that is the who among us the following is an accomplice. So you all know that friends, accomplice has been defined under section 133 of the Indian Evidence Act. Now the options which are given here, you can see a prostitute, a raped girl, a spy, a person giving bribe under coercion. So the right answer is here, a person giving bribe under coercion. Because however he is under coercion, but the person is giving a, a bribe that is a, itself as a, is an offense here. Now the another question is here, the case of Pakala Narayan Swami versus Emperor relates to which? So here the option which are given here, doctrine of estoppel, accomplice, dying declaration and hostile witness. The right answer is dying declaration. You all know that the dying declaration has been discussed under section 32 of the Indian Evidence Act. The other question which is here, that is about the matching the list. So various sections are given and various provisions are given, section 159, section 154, section 60, section, section 141 and the provisions which are given here leading questions, oral evidence, refreshing memories and hostile witness. You all know that friend, section 141 talks about the leading questions, section 60 talks about the oral evidence, section 159 talks about the refreshing the memories and section 154 talks about the hostile witness. So therefore what you see, the answer is here B. So this is the question number, that was the question number 53. Now come to the another question, a confession is inadmissible if it is made by the accused. When a confession is going to be inadmissible, the options are here, to a magistrate while he is in the custody of a police officer, to his friends while he is, is not in the custody of police officer and the to a doctor while he is in the custody of a police officer. And the, the right answer is this, to a spiritual advisor under the inducement for the good of his so, so if any kind of the uh, confession has been made by any person under the inducement, then in that case, it is not going to be a valid confession and it is invalid, for, for, uh, invalid before the magistrate. So now the another question is here, leading question may be asked in. So when a leading question can be asked and the right answer is the during the cross examination. So section 141 talks about the leading questions here. Okay. The another question is here, extrajudicial confession means a confession made before the magistrate in the court to the police officer, to the doctor or none of the other. So extrajudicial confession is that when you are not making any confession either before magistrate or before the police officer. So option is correct is here to the doctor. So this answer is a correct here. Now another question which has been asked. Who among us the following is not a is not a competent witness? Who is not a competent witness? A child, an idiot person, a lunatic person, or a dumb person. So what you can see here, friends, the right answer which you can see here, that is the a person who is an idiot person. Idiot person can't be as a uh, you can say that as a as a competent witness. So here you will see. This is the another thing which you can find here, section under section 118 of the Indian Evidence Act. Now, what is the meaning of hostile witness? When a person would be called that he is a hostile witness, you all know that section 154 of the Indian Evidence Act talks about the hostile witness. An unfavorable witness, a witness who is desirous of telling the truth, a witness who is not the desirous of telling the truth, or an overpowered witness. So what you can see, a witness which is who is an unfavorable witness, then in that case, that person is being called as a 
hostile witness so therefore that means a person who has already given some witness but now he has changed his statements that person is being called as a hostile witness and that person would be as unfavorable witness and therefore hostile witness is a person who is an unfavorable witness now section now there, there is another question which you can see an accomplice shall be competent witness against an accused person assertion has been given and the reason is here an accomplice is unworthy of credit unless he is corroborated in particular particular in, in, in material particular so therefore you can see here now you all know that accomplice has been defined in the section 133 now the correct answer would be here that is the correct answer that both that both a and r are true and r is the correct explanation so it is accomplice is not going to be uh, worthy unless until he is not corroborated in the material particular so therefore you can see this is the right answer of this question now the another question which has been asked here in the up apo examination of 2002 a confession is admissible if it is made by the accused to whom a police officer a doctor while he is in the custody of a police officer his friends while he is in the custody of police officer a spiritual advisor under the inducement for the good of his soul so that is the way you can see and the right answer is that is the b a doctor while he is in the custody of the of a police officer so therefore you can see this confession is admissible now the another question which is here that is the case of kashmira singh versus state of madhya pradesh relate to which kind of the provisions of the indian evidence act so the name of the case is the kashmira singh versus state of madhya pradesh and the right answer is it is about the confession of a co accused so here you can see the options which were given that is dying declaration privileged communication confession to police officer all these are not correct the right answer is confession of a co accused the another question which has been asked here while one of the following sections of the indian evidence act has been substituted for the old section by the information technology act 2000 so which section has been uh, substituted by the uh, the it act of 2000 and the right answer is section 39 so section 22 47 65 they were not uh, substituted this section 39 has been substituted by the act of 2000 the another question which has been asked that which one of the following is a primary evidence so which will be a primary evidence the options which are given here copies made from the original the documents produced for the inspection of the courts certified copies of a document photo state copies of a document so the right answer is here the document produced for the inspection of the court so this is the way you can see here section 62 talks about the primary evidence the another question which has been asked that is about the character of a person for the purposes of the law of evidence is not relevant in one of the following situation when a person's character is not relevant in the following situations so here you can see the option which are given here previous good character of the accused in the criminal cases then previous ba bad character in reply to evidence of good character in criminal cases the other is characters as affecting the amount of damages in civil cases character to prove conduct imputed in the civil cases so the right answer is that is the character to prove conduct in civil cases so therefore you can see that is the way you can find that uh, the uh, is not relevant here in this situation the other question which has been asked and this is which one of the following is not a public document so option which the options which are given here and understood family settlement a registered sale deed judgment of high court then judgment of civil judge so which 
one of the following is not a public document so obviously an unregistered family settlement because it is a very unregistered and family settlement so obviously it is not going to be a public document however a registered sale deed a judgment of the high court and civil judge judgment of the civil judge they all are the public document the another question which has been asked that is a witness who is unable to speak give his witness in writing in the open court evidence so given shall be deemed to be whether that evidence would be a documentary evidence whether that evidence would be a primary evidence or secondary evidence <coughs> or it would be a oral evidence so a person who is not able to speak that person will become under the category of the oral evidence so if he is giving any evidence in writing before the court then in that case it would be a part of the oral evidence another question which has been asked that is about the uh, based on assertion and reasons so assertion is given here extra judicial confession if voluntary can be replied upon with other evidence and the reason which has been given here why this is uh, the this kind of assertion has been given it is that extra judicial confession is a weak piece of evidence yes of course the extra judicial confession is a weak piece of uh, evidence and therefore uh, it can be relied not much unless until it is uh, given voluntarily so therefore you can see this is the way you can find the section uh, question number 67 here now another question which had been asked in the last in the 2002 that an admission under section 17 of the indian evidence act is whether it is a, it is about a, an oral statement or it is oral a documentary statement or it is a uh, an oral documentary or statement contained in the electronic electronic form an oral or documentary statements so the right answer is here which you can see you all know that this is a very one of the important questions that is the answer is c an oral documentary or statement contained in electronic form then in that case the admission comes under this section 17 so it covers all types of the statement here for the admission under section 57 clause 1 of the indian evidence act the form court shall take judicial notice of so which kind of the uh, judis on which kind of a form for the court can take the judicial notice so here you can see the option which are given here that is the option is all laws force in india all laws including foreign laws all laws and asian laws all laws and british laws up to the 1950 so if the court has to take the judicial notice then which kind of the laws they will take so the answer is here as per the section 57 clause 1 that all laws in force in india so for that the court shall take the judicial notice now another question which has been asked which had been asked in the previous years that is document produced for the inspection of the courts includes so if any document which has been produced before the court for inspection what kind of the things it will cover here so the of op the options has been given and later on you can see the courts has been given here so the the first one is a written document a caricature then the third one is an electronic document then another is an inscription on stone you can see document includes all these things so that means a written document a caricature an electronic document and inspection on the stone so therefore this right this answer is correct this option c is correct because it covers all these things within the definition of the uh, document another question which has been asked here in the 2002 that is based on the assertion what it says assertion in certain cases corroboration of a confession is necessary so this is the statement which has been made and why this is kind of the why this kind of the uh, corroboration is required for that the reason has been given here and the reason which has been given here that is the in all cases an extra judicial confession must be corroborated so the a is both a and r are correct that true and r is the correct explanation but here it is about the confession it is not about the extra judicial confession so therefore what you can see both are true but r is not the correct explanation why because the reason is about the 
extra judicial confession and it is not about the confession. So both statements are correct, but R is not giving the right explanation to the assertion. The another question which has been asked, which had been asked in the 2002, in case of suicide by a married woman, the court under section 113A of the Indian Evidence Act may presume that suicide had been abated by her husband if suicide was committed by the law within a period of seven years from the date of her marriage. The wife was subject to the cruelty. The wife was illiterate and formed a poor family and the wife was deserted by the husband. So what is the correct answer that is to be answered to the courts. So now let's see what are the courts given here. Code A is about the option 1, 2, 3. Code B is option about 1, 3, 4. Code C is about the 2 and 4. And uh, the last option D, it includes the code of 1 and 2. So let's see what is 1 and 2 because the right answer is 1 and 2. Suicide was committed within was committed by the law within a period of seven years from the date of her marriage and the wife was deserted by husband. So in these situations, the liability will be upon the relatives of the husbands. Okay. Now the another question which had been asked in the Indian Evidence Act that was on the uh, about the dying declaration. A dying declaration admissible is admissible in evidence. Why a dying declaration is admissible? And the answer is, its admissibility is founded upon the principles of the necessity. Because once a person who is giving a dying declaration and he will be no more in future, and this that person is the best person to give the evidence on, on that point, on that subject matter. And therefore, it is necessary and it is a principle of necessity that the evidence must be taken into account. And therefore, the answer is here correct. Both A and R are true. And R is the correct explanation of A. So here you can see, based on the principle of necessity, the dying declaration is a kind of evidence which is to be taken. Okay. The another question which has been asked, that is about the <coughs> admissions. Whether the admissions are not, uh, the question is here, admissions are not conclusive proof of the matters admitted. Conclusive proof of the matters admitted not to operate as a stoppel of no value. You all know that section 17 talks about the admissions, but this admission is not going to be conclusive proof. It is to be collaborated by some other fact factors or the statements and evidences. So this is the right answer that it is not a, a conclusive proof of the matter admitted. The other question which has been asked here from the Indian Evidence Act, that is which one of the following is a correct statement relating to cross-examination. So here you can see the answers which is going to come here, the options which are given here. Let's see, witness to character may be cross-examined. Leading questions cannot be asked in cross-examination. A person summoned to produce a document can be cross-examined. A witness may not be cross-examined as to previous statement made by him in writing. So what do you see? The right answer which you can find here, that is the A and Y and this is from the section 137. So witness to character may be cross examines as well. So here you can see the correct answer is like this because leading question can, can be asked in the cross examination. Already section 141 talks about this. So there, that is the way you can find this. This was the question from the Indian Evidence Act. So, dear friends, this is the way you can find the uh, question which has been asked in the previous year question paper of 2002 from the Indian Evidence Act. So, in this series, firstly, we are going to cover the questions from the Indian Evidence Act from the question paper of the 2002. And the rest of the question from CRPC and other papers, we will discuss and cover in the next video. So, if you are liking this one, because we are trying our best level, to uh, support you during this preparation. So if you are liking this video, please like and share and subscribe so that 
it will motivate us to make more videos on this kind of the subject matter i hope that you had like uh, this video if you are first on on my on my youtube channel please subscribe this channel so that you can get the all the notification with respect to the the uh, preparation of the ex judicial examinations as well as the previous question papers so thank you to all for joining this video and watching this video